I think we'll uh, begin the webinar. Uh, good day, everyone, and welcome to today's technology broadcast, The Future of Parking Enforcement is Bigger Than the Plate. My name is Tim Taylor, and I'll be facilitating today's session. Before we get started, I'd like to cover a few items to ensure a fluid presentation. Throughout the duration of the broadcast, you'll be on mute. However, we do strongly encourage you to send us questions through your questions window in the panel to your right. We'll queue up all questions for a Q&A period at the end of the broadcast. Also, please note our presenters will be sharing with you their vision of how your agency can build a technology roadmap that's right for you. That being said, questions that are of a higher level and strategic in nature are best suited for this session. Additionally, we are very pleased to announce that we have a special guest joining us at the end of the broadcast for a Q&A period, Pittsburgh Parking Authority Director David Honorado. Mr. Honorado will be on hand to take your questions and share insights into Pittsburgh's successes with Pay by Plate. Lastly, this broadcast is brought to you by Dixon Resources Unlimited. And without any further delay, we're pleased to introduce to you Julie Dixon. Thank you, Tim. Next slide. Good afternoon to everybody and thank you for joining us today. I'm pleased to host this informational presentation that will review some of the latest developments in parking management solutions. Today I've invited two vendors, G-Techna and Calais, to discuss the latest evolutions in parking meter technology along with an integrated parking enforcement solution. During this brief session, we will review the operational success stories that have made Pittsburgh more efficient and customer friendly utilizing this approach. And we will talk about the integrated solution of pay-by-plate meters and license plate recognition technology for enforcement management. Next slide. Let me first introduce myself. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Julie Dixon, and I started an independent consulting business specializing in parking solutions one year ago. I started my career as the first parking enforcement officer for the Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Department, and for over the last seven years, I've been working with meter and enforcement solutions throughout the U.S. market, including supporting the city and county of San Francisco with their parking meter operation, including my involvement with the SF Park Project. For those of you unfamiliar with SF Park, it was the first federally funded program focused on congestion management for both on and off street parking. Now as a consultant, I currently work with municipalities to define their parking technology roadmap in addition to looking for ways to improve their overall parking operation with everything from technology decisions to revenue reconciliation and auditing. Next slide. I mentioned the parking technology roadmap, and I believe that it is essential that an agency define both their short-term and long-term technology goals in order to establish an incremental plan that allows you to make moderate investments towards an overall parking management system. Whenever you're considering new technology, you should consider the five functional areas that are listed here on this slide. Most importantly, always consider how your technology decisions will interface with each other. And prior to any purchase, be sure to define interface requirements and identify vendors with open standards that will allow you for easy integration in order to avoid and minimize future costs. I would like now to introduce Jeff Nethery from Calais America. Next slide. Hey, thanks, Julie. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us this afternoon to talk about pay by plate parking. Uh, as Julie mentioned, my name is Jeff Nethery. And my role as general manager at Calais America is to oversee our sales, service, and support of Calais products here in the United States. So a little bit about Calais. Um, we're a global company. Uh, we have subsidiaries and distributors throughout the world. Calais America is the largest of eight, uh, of eight subsidiary companies. And we have about 13,000 meters installed in over 125 different cities, college campuses, and privately managed parking properties in the United States. Cali's, uh, Cali America's corporate office is located in Tampa, Florida, but we also have regional parts distribution warehouses, technical staff, and sales staff throughout the country. Our largest installations include cities of, uh, such as Chicago, Calgary, and Amsterdam, and most recently, the city of Pittsburgh, which was the first U.S. city to deploy a pay-by-plate system citywide. Next slide. So here are some of the key differentiators between Calais and some of the other vendors in our, in our industry. Um, our systems are really known for their reliability and dependability, and they're specifically designed to be very easy to use and very easy to maintain. 
Uh, we are also an industry leader in pay-by-play technology as well as PCI certified secure payment platforms. In 2010, uh, Cali participated in a technology pilot in Washington, D.C., and we were the only vendor to demonstrate successfully a pay-by-play technology. Next slide. So as you can see, uh, Cali has been in the parking business and specifically the parking meter business for a very long time. Uh, Cali has pioneered the development of electronic pay stations, secure payment platforms, and very robust web-based back office solutions. Cali is now the first company to have a fully integrated, successful pay-by-license plate system deployed in both large municipal environments as well as in a large college campus environment. We're very proud of the partnerships with these key customers and their confidence and trust in our team's ability to develop reliable solutions that are extremely durable, scalable, and upgradable. In fact, um, the components and the software that we're using today in our latest terminal that we call the Cali Web Terminal or the CWT um, can be fit uh, can be retrofitted uh, back into pay stations that have been installed uh, Cali pay stations that have been installed uh, 20 years. Next slide. So one uh, very important uh, piece of the puzzle in managing these very uh, complex real-time systems efficiently is something we call the online parking help desk. Kelly's created a dynamic, unified solution that's really designed to track information from, from all different sources, but there's three key areas. One is the information that the meter or pay stations themselves are generating. So the, the, the system, the pay stations are constantly monitoring uh, for things like uh, paper level, battery level, uh, and issuing warnings and alarms, uh, and our system uh, monitor the, monitors those actively, uh, not, not just in, in, in the form of a communication, but uh, a warning or alarm actually sets up a, a maintenance ticket uh, in, in our system. Secondly, is information that comes in from the customers is very, very important. So we, we track customer phone calls uh, very carefully. We log every single call. Um, everything from questions about hours of operation to questions about enforcement or citations uh, to holiday parking uh, rules, uh, disability parking rules, and, uh, and of course reports about the meter or questions about um, the meter operation. And then finally, uh, and of equal importance, is feedback from the, from the municipal team. So the maintenance staff, the collection staff, the enforcement team that's on the street uh, are, are great eyes and ears that may, may see customers interacting with the pay stations. They may see a sign that needs to be replaced or changed, um, or they may observe some, some other improvement that can be made to the system. So our, our dynamic uh, online parking help desk is designed to bring all of this information together in one source uh, to allow uh, customers to continuously improve their systems and, most importantly, to, to direct their resources uh, in the right areas. Next slide. So here's a good example of customer feedback. This is an actual uh, graph, a statistical graph of calls, inbound calls into our parking help desk. Uh, and it shows you some of the categories that we track uh, calls and uh, what we call reason, reasons for calls. And uh, you'll see a couple of spikes uh, on the graph. And uh, this is pretty typical for municipalities that we take calls from. So these two spikes are on holidays, are on the 4th of July and on Labor Day. And what we find is that this is a, a good indicator when customers need more information. Uh, most of these calls are simply people asking if parking is, is enforced on the holiday. Do they have to pay? What are the parking rules? So this type of feedback from the customers is very important because it can allow you to improve your system. Maybe it's better graphics on the pay station, maybe it's better signage, maybe it's better information going out on, on the website for the parking department. Next slide. So with that, I would like to introduce Mike Bore of G-Techna, who will talk to you about parking enforcement in a pay-by-plate environment. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, G-Techna, we're an enforcement solution provider, and these are our three verticals that we work into, uh, uh, parking, uh, public safety and code enforcement. 
at the end of the day, our business converges to, to one common element, the ticket. So it's not about just about giving the ticket, but it's the whole life cycle of the ticket. The next slide. So G Techno, we have over 100 customers. Here's just a sampling of, uh, of some of our uh, pr prominent uh, customers. And uh, actually, the, the two police departments that are indicated here actually uh, also do uh, parking enforcement. Next slide. Uh, in the evolving uh, parking technology market, uh, we believe uh, it will require collaboration uh, between technology companies. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, Julie mentioned that a bit earlier, uh, and I want to emphasize that. So to ensure that the full solution set is well integrated, uh, technology dictates it, it, and the market will reinforce it. The old days of uh, all companies being their own uh, island, uh, we believe, is over. Uh, before selecting a vendor, uh, look at your future solution requirements. Uh, your solution requirement will probably span across many companies, so uh, ensure your future vision matches well with the suppliers you pick. Next slide. So our, our solution is web-based, uh, so it, it can be installed on-premise or hosted. Uh, if you look at the diagram, you'll just some quick highlights. Uh, so like I was saying earlier, uh, we're all about tickets, uh, the whole life cycle of the ticket. So the full payment module, uh, aging module, uh, court module, DMV module, uh, everything you could possibly imagine, including LPR, uh, manual tickets, uh, the, whole, the whole gamut. Next slide. So our solution is not hard-coded. It has over 30 man years of uh, development and has been designed to fit most agencies' operations. Uh, in this example above, uh, we are showing that the cashier can only view the ticket list with pictures and cannot, as another example, void a ticket. All of this is configurable and when we first install the system, we go through your operation operational needs and we tweak the system uh, uh, to, to what your operations uh, need. So there's no hard coding or, or, or developing new code. It's all configurable. Next slide. So the trend is out. Uh, we've been uh, going to a lot of trade shows, visiting a lot of customers, and uh, time and time again agencies are, are looking uh, for real-time communications, uh, including usage of tablet and smartphone technology. Uh, we still support, of course, the rugged PDA that everyone knows, but uh, parking enforcement agencies are looking at uh, tablet and smartphones because of two reasons, ease of use and cost. Uh, with the cell plan, as an example, these uh, devices can even be offered for free. Uh, in, this ex in this example here, uh, we are showing a screenshot of what a parking officer would see uh, on their uh, Samsung Active uh, smartphone. So on this screen here, we're showing uh, how somebody would do uh, plate verification to see if someone uh, actually paid for their uh, parking. Next slide. License plate recognition, recognition is a uh, force duplicator. Uh, with uh, three reads per second, it is possible to enforce all your parking needs in a fraction of the time. Uh, it would require two tradition, in a traditional method. So with shrinking budgets, and pressure from City Hall to drive more revenue, uh, this technology add-on add is a, really a, a great bullseye for any city uh, parking enforcement agency. Uh, as you can see from the slide, you can enforce all related plate technologies within one application. It's cough law, pay by plate, uh, pay by phone, permits, etc. Next slide. Uh, with over one year of working with Calais and the Pittsburgh Authority, uh, we modified several things in our collaboration efforts. Uh, one of those highlights is a new feature within our command center that's called uh, Plate Check. Uh, plate Check, uh, in a nutshell, corrects error, errors introduced by the parker. Uh, in our experience, we've noticed uh, a trend that around 1% of plates are entered in error. Uh, even after the Calais-Pittsburgh uh, marketing drive to educate the public. 
uh, on the screenshot uh, capture, you can see under terminal number, uh, we capture every transaction that comes from Calais. Next slide. So uh, we use over five different algorithms to correct Parker input. In Pittsburgh, the average amount of uh, pay-by-play transac tra transactions account for approximately 20,000 per day. So consider a 1% error rate might seem small, but in Pittsburgh's example, that accounts for, you know, could account for approximately 200 bad tickets a day. Uh, so imagine, again, a Parker paying for parking and getting a ticket. Uh, this would impact the city in multiple ways. Uh, negative press, adoption rate, complaints to city hall, a lot of work for everyone to deal with. So in this example slide, we show the officer input and then right beside that column, we show the Parker input and the correction method used to correct the Parker entry error in the next column. Next slide. So what ends up happening with this new value add feature? Uh, when the PO does a, a plate verify, our command center will validate what the Parker entered plus all the permutations that the plate check does to ensure a ticket is not wrongfully given. Uh, this feature set is unique in our industry and we think it is a must-have if you want to maximize your adoption rate for pay-by-play technology. Back to you, Jeff. Next slide. Hey, thanks, Mike. Um, yeah, as mentioned earlier, you know, the city of Pittsburgh became the first U.S. city to implement a citywide pay-by-plate system uh, starting last year. Two phases um, that started over the summer of 2012 and then a second phase that uh, just ended uh, this past summer. Um, at the end of this presentation, Tim had mentioned we're honored to have the director of the Pittsburgh Parking Authority, Dave Honorado, uh, with us uh, to participate in our question and answer session. So what I wanted to let everyone know is that you know when the Pittsburgh Parking Authority first issued their RFP for upgrading its parking system, it wasn't specifically looking for a pay-by-plate solution. Uh, what the RFP said and what, what the mission of the Parking Authority was, uh, is they were looking for what they called operational innovation. And they were looking for an integrated, state-of-the-art, first-class parking system to complement the city's efforts of reinventing itself as a world-class city. Some of the key criteria that Pittsburgh used in its decision-making in choosing um, a vendor was, was choosing both a solution and a vendor with a proven track record and a comprehensive plan to implement, uh, deploy, and support the program long-term. Next slide. So they got pretty innovative. The Pittsburgh Parking Authority, um, as you'll see at the top of this slide, they, they actually created uh, 10,000 key fobs in the shape of a Pennsylvania license plate and handed them out um, to customers so that they could actually write their license plate number on the key fob and then have that with them uh, when they were at the pay station. Altogether, um, there's almost 900 pay-by-plate terminals uh, deployed in Pittsburgh now in two phases over over 15 months. Next result, or next uh, slide on results. So some of the results um, are here, and I'll just point out a few of the key ones. Uh, almost 5 million successful pay-by-play transactions, very, very quick uh, public acceptance rate and high customer satisfaction rate, uh, very few complaints, um, although we're logging complaints aggressively and, and, uh, and following up on those when we get them. The benefits include uh, much more uh, efficient enforcement and uh, also knowing exactly how many plates or vehicles were checked for compliance and how many of those plates, how many of the non-compliant vehicles were actually cited. Also, the receipt becomes optional and the customers are not able to use unexpired time from other vehicles since the purchase time is tied to a specific plate number. Next slide. So I mentioned we track customer feedback. We're very aggressive about it. And, uh, and this slide shows a, um, a summary of 
calls into our parking help desk uh, where a customer is calling specifically to complain. Now, they might be complaining about um, hours of operation or hours of enforcement. They might be complaining about the rates. They might be complaining about the color of the meter. Uh, it doesn't matter. We're going to log it as a complaint, and we're going to pass it along in real time to the parking authority. And, um, and we're going to study the data. And as you can see, uh, the complaint uh, the overall complaint rate is quite low. Um, currently, uh, we're averaging less than one complaint of any kind called into the help desk for every 10,000 successful transactions. Next slide. So with that, I'd like to turn the presentation back over to our host, Julie Dixon, who will talk more about why cities, campuses, and operators are considering pay-by-plate systems. Thanks, Jeff. So one of the most frequently debated topics with the municipalities that I've worked with has been whether or not to opt for pay-by-space pay or pay-and-display meters. Once we introduced the concept of pay-by-plate into the discussion and reviewed the overall benefits and efficiencies, the debate is quickly ended. Agencies are quickly realizing the infrastructure cost savings and the ability to maximize parking spaces. And let's not forget, the mobile LPR unit becomes a citywide tool that can be used for more than one purpose. The pay-by-space meter combined with the LPR solution is a cost-effective investment. This approach is not really the wave of the future. It's a current reality that makes the most sense. Next slide. Pay-by-plate offers a simple approach for both meter operations and enforcement. The license plate is the common reference point. Next slide. The one common denominator with parking, as we mentioned, is the license plate. By using this unique identifier with your parking meters, you can leverage the pay-by-plate solution as an incremental investment into a solution that can become a multifaceted enforcement tool for your agency. To set the right direction, you must have a vision, a future target of, what, of where you want your agency to be. The city of Pittsburgh, Calais, and G-Tecna believe that the future is here, and it's called pay-by-plate. Not only is the pay-by-plate technology a benefit in its own right, but if you leverage all of the other enforcement possibilities with the common reference point, the license plate, it will become the barcode of the parking market. Next slide. At this point, we would like to thank you for joining us today. We've listed our company websites for reference, and now let's see if we have any questions. Tim? Thanks, Julie. Thanks, Jeff, and thanks, Mike. Uh, the floor is now open to everyone for question and answer period. We'd like to welcome our special guest now, David Honorado of the Pittsburgh Parking Authority, who is here to share his experience with Pay by Plate in Pittsburgh. And we have a few questions lined up. I'll have, uh, I'll have you, Dave, go ahead and address these questions right away. Uh, the first one is, how are people reacting to this new technology? Thanks, Tim. Uh, let me just start from, uh, the, from the, at the, the onset, the authority of vision more than simply overcoming the, the shortcomings, shortcomings of our current uh, single space meter system. We wanted to implement an automated solution that would increase revenues, improve the organization's efficiency, effectiveness, transparency, and reporting capabilities, and be able to leverage other emerging technologies in the future. With that, we uh, did our due diligence and decided to issue an RFP to uh, replace our existing single space meters. Uh, we had approximately 8,700 uh, single space meters that were 25 years or older. Uh, the original RFP that went out was for an upgrade to a multi-space multi meter, uh, preferably pay and, display, pay and display. But through our research and through the interviews and the RFP process, we continue to uh, learn more about the pay by plate technology. And, and halfway through the original RFP process, we uh, changed up and reissued an addendum for pay by plate technology only and invited the 10 uh, vendors who submitted original proposals to resubmit with the pay by plate technology because it seemed like most of them were capable of uh, providing this service. Uh, we wanted to do that for several reasons, but one of the main reasons was we didn't want to be outdated in two years because technology is ever changing so swiftly. We wanted to be uh, cutting edge technology in Pittsburgh when we went there. And we wanted it to last seven to ten years. Uh, from that and during our research, we realized that technology was there, 
that for any uh, rollout to be successful, we needed to educate the public first. And as Jeff noted, we uh, at the beginning we uh, <coughs> developed a key fob that we presented months in advance of the installation at community meetings, at universities, uh, businesses that would be affected in the area. This was more than just a license plate where they could enter their license plate on as a reminder. It also served as early notification that there was a major change coming to Pittsburgh regarding a parking on-street parking uh, system. With that, we also realized that along with the RFP, the successful bidder, which ended up being Calais, uh, had to be a partner in this uh, marketing campaign that was uh, going to be rolled out. So together, we continued the marketing during, prior to the installation and during the installation. LA provided meter greeters for every block where they opened up, uh, installed new meters for uh, several days to a week. With that, they developed a how-to video that we posted on the city's uh, website along with other key websites throughout the city. Again, we reached out to each uh, business district in the area when it was their turn for the installation. So as of today, we think that part of we knew the technology was there, and we think the success of the program in Pittsburgh was re-educating the public. And we spent a lot of time and effort in making sure the campaign hit the right people. And we think you need the uh, education and support of the public to make the program a success. And today, we have uh, very few issues with people uh, learning the new system. Uh, just probably if you're cities like Pittsburgh, people from the beginning don't like to pay and are resistant to that technological changes. But with the campaign effort that we put out there, we were able to bring them up to speed with the new technology. And today, they seem to be uh, using it well. Uh, as the numbers rolled out, Jeff noted that we have over 5 million successful transactions in over uh, just under 15 months. So the public is uh, very receptive to this change to date. OK, great. Uh, thanks for that, thanks for that uh, response, Dave. Uh, we have a few more questions that came in, and the next one is, are any other agencies asking for this technology? And I'll leave that open to yourself, Dave, and if uh, anybody else wants to chime in, go right ahead. Uh, yes, we've uh, presented a couple uh, at trade shows, our case study in Pittsburgh, and after each time, uh, we've uh, drawn uh, significant interest from the uh, uh, audience at the time, and uh, we made our website and addresses available, and even afterwards, we were contacted by different cities and uh, universities. For example, uh, we've been contacted by Albany Park and the Authority, the City of Sacramento, Deerfield Beach, Florida, Edmonton Parking Authority, Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, Missoula, Montana, Standard Parking, UCLA, University of Colorado, which I believe uh, is the uh, only university in the U.S. today to go with pay and by plate and the Montreal Parking Authority. They all showed interest in what we're doing here in Pittsburgh. I believe they're all uh, close or uh, is to issuing an RFP for upgrading their system, and they're all seriously considering uh, pay by plate with the success we're having here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, and Tim, this is Jeff. I'll, I'll jump in and add that you know five years ago uh, we seldom saw an RFP that had a mention of pay by plate. Uh, whereas uh, today, uh, it's pretty uncommon the last year to see an RP that uh, doesn't at least have uh, a requirement to be able to upgrade to pay by plate. But in most cases, we're uh, we're seeing a requirement for pay by plate capability, and, and and we think a lot of that just has to do with where the technology's gone, uh, the um, the speed of uh, and, and availability and cost of the of wireless. Uh, data transmission and all of the, the developments that have happened uh, in the past five years have really helped. And now, uh, now the systems are are uh, are available. So uh, we've seen a real shift and a quick shift in that direction. Okay, great. Um, we have another question here, and that is, what cost considerations are there when evaluating a pay-by-plate solution? Uh, Yes, let me just, uh, real quick, we did our performer before, uh, financial performer before we issued the RFP. Uh, we anticipated the uh, industry average was if you just install uh, multi-space meters, so your revenue would go up uh, approximately by 10 to 15 percent with just the upgrade from single-space meter to multi-space meters. Uh, 
we also wanted to uh, look at the additional costs we would incur associated with the new technology upgrade. Uh, with that, the single space meter, there were hardly any uh, costs associated to them other than personnel costs and some uh, parts costs. But with the new technology, you have the uh, maintenance costs, annual maintenance costs. You have credit fee costs. Our credit card usage went up drastically. Uh, we're about 80% of our transactions today through the multi-space meters or credit card and 20% uh, cash. So we've seen a significant increase in credit card fees, bank fees, and just uh, operational fees that you don't have with the old system. But they definitely the uh, benefit of the technology and the end user's uh, efficiency and the uh, increased revenues out, still outweigh the uh, additional costs we uh, associated have seen here in Pittsburgh. Thanks for that response, Dave. Uh, we do have a couple more questions that came in, uh, a couple from Rick. And uh, the first question is, what percentage are there of unreadable plates? And if I may, just to clarify, um, I believe that uh, I, I think that we want to address the, the percentage of, of error and plate entry, whether it's uh, on the Parker side or uh, on the enforcement side with the parking enforcement officer entering a plate, because um, license plate recognition is not used in the Pittsburgh Parking Authority solution. So, um, Dave, I don't know if you want to uh, address that or uh, Jeff? Uh, yes, currently uh, you're correct. We don't use uh, LPRs, but we're in the process of uh, purchasing three for uh, uh, our enforcement uh, officers. But other than that, our officers currently enter the hand, the ticket, I mean, the license plate of the uh, parkers into their handhelds on a daily basis. Uh, so at the beginning, uh, we did have some uh, learning curve with both the uh, officers and the public. Uh, the officers uh, or the public, could we uh, noticed we're entering the plate in wrong. We did an uh, educational session with our officers and came up with a how-to uh, for enforcement with the new uh, entering the license plate in. So basically, any, they're instructed when a license plate uh, comes up unpaid in their handheld that they should verify by a visual verification that they entered it right. And if not, they're to re-enter it again. Uh, we'd rather be take the extra time and enter it in twice to see if they correctly put the right characters in the uh, handheld. Also notice that the uh, public were uh, incorrectly entering their plate into the system, which inadvertently they were receiving tickets for. And this, you know, we had to correct immediately because we had people who were paying for the parking but then receiving tickets. With that, we worked with uh, G-Techna, and Mike has explained in the presentation, we came up with a solution. Uh, I'm still calling it fuzzy logic, Mike. I forget what you called it. Plate check, I believe now. That's where correct. basically if an individual enters 80% of their plate into the uh, uh, meter correctly and make a payment, we'll get them credit for it because the back office system, the software, will be able to match those up and uh, identify a payment was made. So if they leave a character, one of the seven characters off and only enter six, we'll notice, uh, catch that and give them credit. Or if they do a transposition error of two characters side by side, We'll also find that and give them credit for that because the integrity of the system uh, would definitely uh, be jeopardized if we kept it, uh, issuing tickets on payments that were made. Uh, with these solutions, we have seen the uh, issue uh, go down drastically, and we can track how many plates were entered incorrectly by either the officer or the uh, public and notice they were caught. And I don't have the numbers with in front of me, but we can see how many uh, tickets were could have been issued if this system wasn't in place. Yeah, thanks, uh, um, uh, Dave. Uh, on that, just to, to add a couple things. Um, uh, one thing I didn't mention during my presentation is I mentioned Parker error, but it also uh, catches um, the uh, the parking enforcement officers error. Uh, sometimes they make errors too, I guess. Um, but also want to uh, mention that uh, Pittsburgh is going to be continuing enhancing the technology they have from uh, G-Techna. Uh, two things, one is the uh, license plate recognition uh, vehicle that they're going to be uh, adding on in the next uh, month or two. And, and the other one that we're probably going to be trialing with them very soon is uh, doing LPR on a, on a handheld device. 
uh, currently uh, Pittsburgh is entering uh, the plate numbers. Okay, thanks, Mike. Um, we have a, a few more questions, and uh, one of them is, uh, what currently are being done with the single space meters? Uh, currently, we have a warehouse full of uh, single space meters in post. Uh, several months ago, we did issue advertisement in uh, all the uh, industry magazines and that. We're trying to sell them. Uh, we're offering uh, them uh, for sale for about $50 a meter. Uh, most of them are still workable conditions. We did have one municipality just last week buy 200 of them. Uh, we also have posts uh, for sale, but it's our intent within the next six to eight months, if there's no interest in purchasing them, they're, uh, they're taking up too much space in a warehouse, and we've started uh, actively now reaching out to scrap dealers to see what kind of value is there. But we also contacted the different manufacturers, Duncan and Palm, to see if they had any interest in buying uh, some used meters back, and we're waiting to hear from them, too, as a possibility. But if anyone's interested out there in purchasing uh, some single-space meters, uh, we definitely have them and could uh, reach me afterwards, and maybe we can work something out. The price would be negotiable at this time. Okay, great. And uh, another question that's come in uh, regarding the Cali pay stations and uh, whether or not they're hardwired, so I'll, uh, I'll let Jeff take that one. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Um, I think the um, you know the majority of our pay stations, we've got about thirteen thousand of them installed. About uh, ninety-five percent of those are solar configured uh, pay stations. So, including the ones in in uh, Pittsburgh, none of them are hardwired. Uh, they're all uh, coin card solar charged, and um, and they work uh, really well. The the pay stations are really specifically designed to conserve energy at all times, and um, and they're engineered in such a way that um, that they they can work even even in climates uh, northern climates where uh, there isn't as much sunlight or direct sunlight uh, that they, they they hold up very well and, uh, and are able to charge the batteries uh, using the integrated ten watt solar panel. Okay. Uh, that looks like it's about it for the questions. And should there be any other questions, uh, don't hesitate to, to contact uh, Julie. Uh, we will be sending a follow-up email, as a matter of fact, uh, after the webinar. And uh, with that, we, we will be sending some uh, pay-by-plate videos and some other helpful information. So um, if there are no further questions, then we will close the broadcast at this point. And I wanted to just, uh, oh, it looks like uh, we have a few more questions uh, coming in. Um, if you want to just address this, uh, what has been the impact to ticket appeals and court challenges? You want to go ahead and uh, address that, uh, Dave? Uh, yes, at the beginning, uh, we saw, uh, uh, I guess, a significant increase in the uh, Court hearings or uh, contention of tickets because of the learning curve it took and the uh, issue that we discussed earlier with the officers and the public entering in the uh, license plate incorrectly. But now it has seemed to level off. Uh, our public got uh, familiar now with using the pay-by-plate. We're back to where we were before, uh, if not below our average for the uh, uh, hearings for the tickets, so uh, we had a slight decrease in tickets being issued in the last several months, and our compliance for people, the, of the plates we check on a daily basis, our compliance is anywhere from 75 to 80 percent. We're seeing people paying the meters, so it adversely affects the tickets. Uh, they are down somewhat now, uh, but we think the enforcement of uh, these plate, plate system technology is uh, much more efficient for us to do and we see that trend continuing. And we also just, uh, we saw the public requested that uh, one of the issues once they start with the new system, they had uh, concerns that they had to come to downtown to contest the ticket. So just recently, two weeks ago, we developed and implemented an online hearing, which is very successful too, now that they have the ability to do it at the convenience of their home or office, rather, to come at downtown. 
Thanks, Dave. Uh, we've got uh, another question that's come in. Um, so uh, how, how has it impacted staffing? Uh, has PEO staffing been reduced or? No, uh, in the, uh, with the authority, we're all, uh, the officers and the uh, technicians are all union too. So uh, we have no, uh, we saw no reduction in staff, uh, but we have not increased staff either. We're able to uh, re better utilize our personnel staff. Uh, we have better collection schedules now and maintenance schedules. Instead of in the past uh, on a single space, we had to go out every day with the technicians and the collectors, hit every meter to see if it needed collected or if it need was up and running. Now through the back office Kelly uh, website, we're able to determine uh, what meters need collected, what meters need attention to, maintenance attention to. So we go directly to those meters and not wasting time driving around the entire city looking for uh, meters that are broken. Uh, so we're able to be more efficient now with the smaller number of uh, staffing that we had. We don't have to increase it. We only had uh, eight technicians and collectors, a uh, total of eight between the two of them, and we have uh, 20 full-time officers and 20 part-time. And with that staff now, we're going to be able to maintain, if not improve upon our efficiency of, for operations without increasing staff. Thanks again, Dave. Okay, um, if there are no additional questions, we are going to wrap things up. And we, again, wanted to thank I you, Dave. I just one, I guess, with the football games. Is that a question? What's that? Someone's asking about event parking. Um, I, I'm not seeing a, a question on event parking here. No, uh, is there something you wanted to address uh, regarding event parking? No, I mean, the new system gives us the ability to uh, program the, the meters to uh, uh, inform the public in advance of the activity going on around uh, the stadiums and that. So uh, our meters around the uh, uh, football and baseball stadiums uh, are set on uh, uh, timers, but are uh, five, like five hours before a game time, the meter will notify that uh, there'll be no parking at a certain time. So through the meters now, we're able to communicate with the public of an event going on. Well, that's, that's uh, fantastic uh, to be able to do that. OK, um, it looks like that is it. So we're going to round, round everything down. Uh, again, uh, thanks to, to Dave from the Pittsburgh Parking Authority, Julie. Jeff and Mike, and thanks to everyone for your participation and interest, and we look forward to welcoming you all again for another technology broadcast. And in the meantime, we will be sending you a follow-up email with links to play-by-play -play videos and some other uh, additional information. So thanks again, and enjoy the rest of your day, folks. Take care. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Tim.